Hello dear student, I welcome you again as we continue with social studies. Remember, we are on unit number 16. Last time we looked at unit 16 part 1 when we introduced this unit Nyasaland uh, uh, as a British protectorate or as a British colony. Now we are continuing on the same because last time we just studied all factors that contributed or that led to Nyasaland to be a British colony. We looked at the coming of the missionaries and the partition of Africa. Those two were the main factors that resulted into Britain developing interest to colonize Nyasaland. Now it was done. It was uh, colonized. This time we are going to look at the uh, administration of uh, Harry Johnson who was appointed as the commissioner and Consul General for Nyasaland. Now we're going to see what happened. What, what was his administration, Harry Johnson, between 1891 up to 1964? What happened? Remember then, last time we also mentioned that uh, between 1953 and 1963, Malawi, Zambia, and Zimbabwe. What happened? I guess you're right. It was declared a British uh, a federation of Rhodesia and Nyasaland. That's correct. Now, we are going to continue looking at the administration of the colonial government under uh, Harry Johnson, under Sir Harry Johnson. So, we'll be looking at the Johnson administration from 19, or 1891 to 1964. Be there up to the end. Now, as usual, I need to show you this. This is very, very important because as you stay, as you do everything, you have to know that the work that is waiting for you for social studies, here it is. So it's up to you uh, to divide your time and find time to work on this because this is for you only on social studies. On agriculture, it is there. On mathematics, it is there. And this one is only for social studies. So concentrate, concentrate on this. Now, what was the Johnson administration? What did Johnson do? What Johnson administration did from 1891 to 1964? Number one, his administration set up four districts over uh, the new protectorate for effective rule. So when Malawi was declared a protectorate, the first thing that Johnson did was to divide Malawi into four districts. Why? For effective administration. For effective administration. What were these four districts? Number one was North Nyasa, and this North Nyasa district was the present day Karonga and Chitipa. That one those were one district of North Nyasa. And there was West Nyasa. In West Nyasa, there was Rumpi, Mzimba, and Kadabe. Those ones, they were the West Nyasa districts. And there was the South Nyasa. The South Nyasa comprised of central region, including Mangochi. So the whole central region, it was called the South Nyasa district, including Mangochi. And there was the Lower Shire, the Lower Shire district. And this one included the southern region excluding Mangochi. So the whole of southern region today, it was called the Lower Shire, excluding one district. What is that? Mangochi. So that's how uh, the Johnson administration divided Nyasaland into four districts. North Nyasa district, then there was the West Nyasa district, the South Nyasa and the Lower Shire. Remember this, it is very important to remember where Malawi is coming from. So it is established defense post uh, at Fort Hill, Fort Hill in Chitipa, Fort Manning in Mchinji, Fort Johnson in Mangochi, and Fort Magaya, Fort Magaya at Makanjira in Mangochi. So he also established the defense posts that were called what? Forts, the forts. 
So there was Fort Hill. Where is Fort Hill? Chitipa. And Fort Manning. Where is it? Mchinji. And Fort Johnson. Where is it? Mangochi. And Fort Magaya. Where is it? And that was Makanjira in Mangochi. Remember these things. So this was to prevent occupation of Fort Nyasaland by the Germans in Tanganyika, the British South African Company in Zambia, and the Portuguese Mozambique in Mozambique. So why did Johnson establish the uh, those defense forts, the forts in Mchinji, in the, uh, we have talked of uh, up there in uh, Chitipa, and again in Mangochi, there were two in Mangochi, Fort Magaya and the, uh, Fort Johnson in Mangochi, Makanjira and Mangochi. So why did he do that? To prevent the pre uh, expansion or penetration of other people, like the Germans who were in Tanzania, the Portuguese who were in Mozambique, and again the British South African Company, which was also working independently gaining territories, but it was in Zambia. So because of that then, Cecil John Rhodes, he put some uh, soldiers in those ports, forts that we have talked about. So those forts were like the places where the soldiers are, like today we call the barracks. So there was the, the barracks in Chitipa, the barracks in Mchinji, the barracks, two barracks in uh, Mangochi. Why? For the sake of defense and to protect other uh, people from expanding or penetrating in Mali. That's what he did. He established what we call the forts. The forts. Also, his administration, Johnson's administration, established uh, Port Herod in Sanje as a major port for steamers sailing from Chinde in the Indian Ocean through the Zambezi and Shire rivers. So, again, he established a port in Sanje. So that port was called Port Herat. So listen to this. We have talked of two similar words here. Forts and ports. We said he established four forts. What are forts? They are the defense posts, like the barracks. But here we have just mentioned of the port. A port is where the steamer or the ship are docks or where the steamer or the ship stops, like we have a uh, Chirumba, Jite, that can be a port, yeah, Kadabe, port, can be a port, yeah, so, like that, so he established one port, where was it? In Insanji, what was its name? Uh, it was called Port Herod, it was not Fort Herod, but Port Herod, so differentiate these two, a fort and a port. Know the difference of these two. So from 1894 to 18, uh, 1963, the administration was uh, improved. So it was improved. They, uh, they improved their administration from uh, 1894 to uh, 1963. For example, Sir, ha Sir Alfred Sharp was appointed the British government uh, by the British government as the first governor of Nyasaland in 1907. So in 1907, the British, they appointed uh, Sir Alfred Sharp to be the governor of Nyasaland. And the Nyasaland was later split into smaller administrative districts, which were called the Bomans, the Bomans. So later on, the Nyasaland, instead of only having four districts, they split it into four are uh, small, small districts that were called the, the Boma, Boma. Today we hear Mchinji Boma, um, Makaronga Boma, Manza Boma. Those were called the Bomas. What does this word Boma stand for? This word stands for the British Overseas Management Administration. The British Overseas Management Administration. That is what Boma stands for. Today we are used to call that uh, uh, Boma. Um, Chinji Kasungu, Boma, like that. Uh, Boma standing for British Overseas Management Administration. So, I guess you know that one. So, each Boma was headed by the District Commissioner, which is the DC, and the Boma had the
the DC's office, a police station, a prison, a public works department uh, for construction and maintenance of for roads and buildings, an education office, an agriculture office, a hospital, and other departments. So each and every boma, each and every district, they had uh, government institutions like the DC's office, there was there the public, public works uh, department for construction of roads and others. There was also the education office, agriculture office, health office, and the, uh, the hospital. So they did that. They tried to do all those things. So remember those things, how the colonial government established their power. So the district were grouped into three provinces. So all those small districts were grouped into uh, provinces, and there were three provinces, which means now those four districts, they were no longer existed. The North Nyasa, the West Nyasa, they no longer existed. Now they were broken into smaller districts as we know them by now, Chitipa, Karonga, Karabe, Manza, Chikwawa, uh, Sanje, as we know them by now. But then, uh, those, all those districts were now grouped into provinces, and we are saying that there were three provinces. What were these? The northern or the north province, central province, and the southern province. There were those three provinces, the north, the central, and the south. Today we call the northern region, central region, and southern region. So it was started by the colonial administration. So, Mzuzu, Lilongwe, and Blantyre, they were taken as the provincial headquarters, respectively. So, in the north, Mzuzu was taken as the headquarter for the northern province. And Lilongwe was taken as the headquarter for the southern province. Blantyre was taken as the headquarter of the southern province, just as it is. But still, the capital city was Zomba. So each province was headed by a provincial commissioner. So each province, north, south, and central, they were the provincial commissioners who were there uh, to guide or to rule. So this was the structure of the government. As it is, the governor was on top, then the provincial governors, then the district commissioners. So the governor, just as we have mentioned, so Alfred Sharp was it the governor. So there were three provinces, north, central, and south. So there were provincial commissioners. And district commissioners were looking at the districts. Chitipa, Mwanza, Mangochi, Machinga, like that. So in all the districts, there were the district commissioners. Just as it is, we have maintained that situation even up to now. So tax... Uh, was to be paid by every man. So everyone was supposed to pay the tax, and that was, it was introduced. So tax to be paid by every man was introduced, and the money was used to build roads, schools, health facilities, and other projects. So we are saying the colonial government started now to uh, introduce the tax, that every man must be paid the tax. So what was the use of that? to build the roads, schools, hospitals, and the like. So the money for building the roads were taken from the taxes that were uh, paid by each and every man in Malawi or in Nyasand. And a legislative council, legislative council, which was abbreviated to LEGICO, was established in Zomba. So the LEGICO, uh, which was similar to the parliament today, was set was set up to make laws of uh, the country. So they made the Legislative Council or the Parliament. It was responsible for making the laws. Traditional chiefs were recognized as part of the administration. So they are all uh, were to collect taxes and settle local disputes. So the colonial administration also recognized the traditional authorities, the traditional chiefs, to say they were part of administration of the government. So they had two major roles. Number one, to collect taxes from the people and bring it to the government. 
Number two was to settle the disputes, to settle the local disputes. Now, let us look at the advantages. What were the advantages? What are the advantages of Nyasaland as a British colony? Number one, the slave trade was abolished because Yao and Arab slave traders were defeated. So they managed to defeat the, trade, uh, the slave traders. Where it is the Yao, the Arabs were defeated. Then, therefore, slave trade ended. It was abolished. Remember, abolition of slave trade, to abolish is to finish or to end uh, something. And also, trade in goods replaced the slave trade. So after they stopped slave trade, then they started trading in different goods, bicycles, radios, and the like. And Western type of education was introduced by the British missionaries. So they introduced the uh, education as it is today, you are in standard eight. It was also started by this, the colonial government. But that one, uh, it was mainly started by the missionaries who first invited the uh, British government to colonize Nyasaland. And cash crops such as tea, coffee, and tobacco were abolished in the Shire Highlands, so were established. So these crops, cash crops such as tea, coffee, tobacco, uh, they were established in the Chile Highlands. So they started growing cash crops there, the crops that could bring in money to the government. So they introduced tea, coffee, and tobacco, uh, people started growing those things, especially in the Chile Highlands. But what were the disadvantages? What can be the disadvantages of Malawi or Nyasaland as a British colony? What are the disadvantages? Number one, African customs and, and practices were lost uh, because they were condemned by the missionaries. So customs, African customs were condemned. So they stopped to say, don't do this, don't do that, because they were African customs. So they were condemned. Uh, some European settlers took land from Africans for their estates, especially in the Shire Islands. We have said that they opened the, uh, the estates for cash crops, tobacco, cotton, uh, and tea. There, then, the white settlers, they grabbed land from the indigenous people. Therefore, the people lost the land. Up to now, if you go to the Shire Highlands, those estates in, uh, originally belonged to the people, uh, the indigenous people, but they were taken from the people. And also, those who stayed on the European land had to wait for them as tenants without pay. So this system was known as the Tangata system. So the British government introduced the Tangata system. Land was grabbed, and people in that land were not allowed to go out to say, all right, you will be living in the same land, but this land is ours, so you are tenants in our land. So you will be paying to us. So how do you pay? You don't have money. Therefore, you will be working in our farms. Working in our farms, as a rent for staying in our land. Look at that. So that was called what? Tangata system. So they introduced that one. Africans could not mix freely with the whites. So although uh, it was a Nyasaland government of Malawi with majority of the people being Africans, but there was no interaction between the whites and the, the Africans. And also, Tax was introduced, and those who failed to pay tax had to work as laborers to get money for the tax. So when they introduced tax, people were forced to go and work as laborers in order to get money and uh, pay the taxes. So it was not good as well for the people because they were working to pay the taxes. And the tribes were divided because of creation of new countries. So tribes were are divided. Tribes were divided because of the creation of new countries. Remember, partition of Africa created countries. This is Zambia, this is Malawi, this is Tanzania. But previously they were just kingdoms, small, small kingdoms, people were interacting in the same area. But after that then there was the demarcation and tribes, it was found that some tribes who were maybe belong where the chair, they were divided, others in Zambia, others in Malawi. But all of them are the chair. So tribes, we are divided. 
to this one, we have come to the end of uh, this unit, uh, that is unit 16, when, where we are looking at Malawi or Nyasaland as a British colony. We have looked at part one and part two. Today, we are just finishing the last part. I guess you have taken some of the other issues from uh, this part. If not, replay. Pause and replay the video to get the full concept of this. This unit is very important because it is talking about our country, Malawi, where we are coming from. So it's like the history of Malawi. You know where Malawi is coming from to be where we are today. But as usual, let me leave you with uh, this uh, small exercise here. So there are about 10 uh, questions. So pause the video, read through, and uh, study this question. Write them somewhere so that you follow them uh, well. And write good answers. I need good answers from you. Now, uh, next we'll be continuing with uh, Unit 17 as we continue with it, social studies in standard eight. But in unit 17, we're going to look at the independent Malawi, the independent Malawi. We have just looked at Malawi as a colony, as under Britain, but now things turned out. Malawi became independent. How was it? So we're going to look at this wonderful unit, independent Malawi. Be there next time and don't miss out on this one. Until next time, thank you so much.